My name is Maggie Horseman, and I'm a board-certified registered art therapist living in Columbus, Ohio. I've had the chance to talk to a couple of students in the past month through Zoom as they were doing projects for school. One of them is a bachelor's level person who is interested in art and psychology, and the other person is a graduate level student working on an art therapy degree. So they had lots of questions about those of us who are working in the field. And one of the things that really inspired me, and I felt like I have to share this with you for a post, is that one of the things that I would recommend for students in counseling, social work, psychology, or art therapy is being in counseling while you're in graduate school. I was lucky enough that I'd done some counseling um, for myself before I got into school, and then I had started Jungian analysis about six months before my program started, and it was a godsend. Honestly, I don't think I would have gotten through my art therapy graduate program if it hadn't been for my analyst helping me along the way. They give you extra support, they are a mentor, and here's the other bit of it. When you're in graduate school, first of all, graduate school is hard. The schedule is crazy. You have a whole lot to do. A lot of times you don't have time to be working. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough time. You're exhausted. And on top of it, counseling and art therapy programs are transformative. It builds on one piece after the other, and it changes who you are. A lot of the assignments question um, weak spots you have, wounds. If you're not dealing with your past trauma um, or even personality clashes, it's going to project into your world and make your life that much more chaotic. So you really do need to be hashing it out on your own. Your teachers, while they are licensed counselors, they don't have time and it's not their role. Their role is as a teacher, not as your therapist. So I really would recommend um, considering being in therapy or art therapy as part of your schooling expenses, and it really helps you in the long run too. In the United States, um, counseling is not, um, personal counseling for yourself while you're in a counseling program is not required. A lot of programs highly, highly recommend it. and Honestly, I don't know how you would get through a counseling program without being in therapy. Once you get into your practicums or your internships, you are working with clients. Um, a lot of times you don't know what you're doing yet, so you're learning on the fly. You're making mistakes. The, uh, the, the stakes are high. It feels like you know you might you know, be trying to avoid hurting people or making it worse because you are beginning and you don't know what you're doing yet. Um, and you'll be in a group supervision class as part of your practicum experience. However, that's with a bunch of other students, and they are also using that class as a way to integrate the theory that you've learned into what you're practicing, as well as just the ins and outs of how to run a therapy session, as well as what is art therapy and am I doing it right, and dot, dot, dot. You know what I mean? So the problem with that is that because it's group supervision, there's a finite amount of time. And there's very little time to deal with countertransference. And countertransference is, in a therapy session, what comes up for the therapist through that's triggered by the client. And that could be past stuff that you've had, relationship type things. It could also be that people, your, your clients are triggering your complexes and then you're acting out of an unconscious habitual way of acting or projecting something on your client that they aren't actually doing. And if you aren't in some type of therapy that's working on you with this uh, countertransference, you're not going to see your blind spots. That's why they're blind spots, because you're blind to them. That seems obvious, right? And yet a lot of people who have become therapists haven't done therapy. 
Part of this, I think, is the stigma of counseling itself, which seems count, uh, kind of like counterintuitive for somebody in a counseling program. But it's also because they there is the stigma of thinking that somebody that goes to counseling is ill and that somebody who gets mental health treatment is somehow not a healthy person. And honestly, I think everybody should try some therapy and it can be from a strength-based approach. Just because you're getting by okay and you may not have any mental health diagnoses doesn't mean that therapy wouldn't help you and therapy wouldn't make you a better person and make you more aware of what your blind spots are and make you better at social interactions and give you better relationships. There's all sorts of things that might be good enough that could definitely become better. So that's part of it too. Uh, all of that said, I really like working with students and that's why I offer a special student rate. So if you're currently in an art therapy or a counseling program and you'd like to do some art therapy on your own, therapy can cost about as much as a car payment. Um, you don't have to worry about if your insurance is going to um, approve it or not if you're paying for it for yourself. And if you consider it part of your schooling expenses, it really is an investment in yourself. So if you're a student, uh, contact me about my special student rates. I'd be happy to talk to you. I have a free consultation session that you can book online straight through my website. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have and good luck. Thank you.